This program is produced by the Global Network on Energy for Sustainable Development and facilitated by the United Nations Environment Program with support from the governments of Denmark and Germany. Two billion men, women and children in developing countries struggle daily for the necessities of life. Clean water, enough food to eat, and a job. For many of these people, energy is not just hard to come by, it's often the lowest quality forms, such as wood, often taken from forests illegally, or kerosene, both of which create significant indoor pollution and health risks. And they pay a lot for it, more as a percentage of their income than people who can get electricity from a local power grid. Providing modern energy forms, such as electricity, is literally the spark for development powering lights for education and for home industries that can generate a family income. This is a key challenge if the world is to meet the Millennium Development Goals. The Global Network on Energy for Sustainable Development has been analyzing this challenge. At Argentina's Centro Bariloche, researcher Nicolas Disbrovaca said an initial study found some surprising results. It was the lack of energy that these families had and in this first report that we have done at, at that time, we found that here in Latin America, the main problem of energy access was mainly in the urban sector, known for the poor that were living in the rural sector. The challenge to provide energy in poor urban areas is substantial. One third of the rapidly increasing urban population dwell in slum areas and on unauthorized lands. Because they have no legal status, they are almost always denied access to a legal electricity connection. Further study by the Global Network on Energy for Sustainable Development investigated energy use by poor urban and peri-urban households, including the barriers to providing them with better access to clean and modern energy services, such as electricity. Researchers from GNESD centers in Africa, Asia, and Latin America participated in the study, including professors Ram Strestha and S. Kumar from the Asian Institute of Technology. In the case of uh, Thailand, uh, has been the requirement that the households need to have formal household registration before one is uh, allowed to have legal access to electricity connection. As a result, uh, those in the slum areas and many of the poor families, they were denied say, access to electricity supply. They had to find some innovative ways in having electricity connection through the neighbors who had legal electricity connections. The study found that one of the barriers is a legal one. People must have a permanent registration or title to a dwelling before they can be connected which is often impossible for people living in unauthorized, semi-permanent urban settlements. As a result, the team found that a small change in regulations that allow semi-permanent households a grid connection can bring substantial results. <laughs> Mr. Pei Pei remembers when there was no electricity and the problems getting connected. <laughs> This small change by the Thai authorities for semi-permanent households has helped this woman gain a new electricity connection. For her, an electricity bill is a sign of progress. For this woman, electricity means she can use modern appliances. Half a world away, GNESD researchers also studied households in Nairobi's sprawling Kibera settlement. There, William Maganda has lived for 11 years with his three children. Sababu kiangalia kwa saizi, our salary for one month is about 4,000. Na steamer for one month is about 3,000. So, unaona sasa ukia weka bilia steamer kwa hiyo, our salary ya 4,000. John Kamani from the Afroprint Network is also involved in the GNESD study. We looked at the situation and found that uh, one of the things that could be immediately uh, be implemented 
was uh, providing uh, flood lighting. Uh, there are no street lights here, and uh, it can be very dark at night. It improves security in the area and also provides uh, some lighting for children to do their homework. The difficult challenge of providing modern energy services to places like Nairobi's Kibera settlement will require both policy and financial support. The study found that the majority of the houses connected to electricity in the area either had illegal connections or were tapped from a single point. Energy services to the urban poor is very important because you find that a large proportion of the population based in Nairobi actually lives in these urban areas uh, behind us, these informal settlements, and uh, they do not have access to electricity. The work of the GNESD is important to the one billion people trapped in poor urban settlements. Without effective action, the major cities of tomorrow's developing world will be places of unparalleled inequality. To prevent this from happening, the GNESD study demonstrates that good policy is needed, along with targeted subsidies and better education. This is an urgent issue and one the GNESD will continue to investigate.